for the next set of paper that we have here is set 22, May, June 2020. So for the first question here, they are assessing you on order of rotational symmetry. So for this type of question, what you need to do is to choose one of the point and then you try to rotate the entire thing. So in our case, because uh, there's some specialty of this shape on the left hand corner and the right hand corner, so the order of rotational symmetry will only be two because at 180 and 360 degree of rotation, it will fall back into the same shape and then with the special shaded on the left hand and the right hand corner. So question two here, they wanted you to measure that if 21 degrees Celsius fallen by 26 degrees Celsius and what will be the temperature? So 21 minus 26, you should get negative 5. And for question 3 here, they are looking for X value. So the first thing that I noticed was the 130 degree over there because a straight line will form 180 degree. So 180 minus 50, it should be 130. So 180 minus 130, you have a balance of 50. So this 50 degree here will be split equally between 2x. So 2x equals to 50, x should be 25. The reason why I know the other side will be x as well is because it is a isosceles triangle. Question four, writing down a squared number is greater than 10. It should be 4 times 4, which is 16. And, and irrational numbers, it can be anything uh, with a square root or from a symbol sign. So in our case, I selected a square root 2. If you got any other square root that you wanted to put, as long as you have to key into the calculator, you can't actually transform it into a fraction. It should be fine, you can just include that. So I just choose the smallest one. So I decided to put square root 2. Question 5, y equals to mx plus c, substitute uh, m equals to negative 3, x equals to negative 2, and c is negative 8. By substituting it, you should get your y as 2. As for question 6, pretty straightforward. Top plus bottom divide by 2, multiply with the height. So for this, after the calculation, it should be 45 centimeter square. As for question 7, they are looking for A intersect with B. So the shaded region will be the one that I shade red color over there. As for question number 8, 2 to the power of negative 4, okay, uh, because of the power having a negative, you can actually bring it down as 1 over 2 to the power of 4. Then, when you came to the calculator, you should get 1 over 16, which translates into 0 0.0625. As for question 9 over there, they gave us that the bearing of B from A is 105. So for this angle here, you can actually use the alternate, ang uh, alternate angle uh, theorem that we learned and transfer the 105 degree information to the other side that I label over there. And the last thing that you can put will be 180. So 180 plus 105, your bearing of A from B should be 285. Question 10. Okay, uh, the numerator of the other side, I compare it with the denominator of the other side. So over here, we have 2 compared to 4. After the simplification, you will have a balance of 2 at the numerator and the Q will cancel off each other. 
So your balance will be 2 times P squared over T. Question 11, pretty straightforward. As per usual, changing the mixed numbers of 1, 3 over 4 into 7 over 4. And then minusing it off with 11 over 12. So what I did, it was to change all the base into 12 and then simplifying them. So the 7 over 4 there, I have to multiply both the numerator and denominator with 3. Then 21 minus 11, you should get 10 over 12, which translates into 5 over 6. Over at question 12, Roberto buy a toy for 5, then sell it for 4.6. Find the percentage loss. Please remember that 5 is actually your original price and 4.6 is your new price. So 5 minus 4.6 divided by 5, multiply it with 100. You should get your balance as 8%. As for question 13, divide here actually translate into minus in the power section if their base is the same. So in our case here, I just take the numerator together. So 8 divided by 4, you should have a balance of 2. Whereby for t to the power of 8, okay, divided by t to the power of 4, I will be writing it as t to the power of 8 minus 4. And the balance from here will be 2t to the power of 4. As for question 14, I multiply 5 with 3, I get 15. 1 minus x equals to 15. And after the rearrangement, you should get your results as x equals to negative 14. As for question 15 here, Ella Heights is 175cm, corrected to the nearest 5 centimeters. This information here, we'll be using it to identify our rounding value. So rounding value, we'll be taking the nearest, okay, the figures over there is 5 centimeters, divided by 2, you should get 2.5, okay? And you, you're playing the role to decide whether to add it or minusing it. So since they wanted the upper bound, which is the highest possible value for the height of Ella, I'll be taking 175 plus 2.5, which is 177.5. Question 16. Pretty straightforward. Just key in your calculator. You should be able to get your answer as 2.7 times 10 to the power of negative 8. Question 17. A train length of 105 takes 11 seconds to pass through a tunnel completely. Okay, the station length is 225. So please take note that because the keyword passes through. So you actually need to take the station length as well as the train length, add them both up in order to calculate the total distance. Okay, so the total distance here will be 330 meters, but because of the speed is calculated in kilometers per hour, so you actually need to convert these meters here into kilometers, which translate into 0 0.33 km. So this 0 0.33 km will be our distance here, and the time was 11 seconds, and you need to convert this in terms of hours. So right, we're taking 11 over 3,600 because in one hour itself, there's 60 minutes and there is 60 seconds in one minute. So 0 0.33 divided by 11 over 3,006, you should get your speed as 108 kilometers per hour. So question 18. Single transformation that maps triangle T onto U. Please take note that it was from the shape T to U. Okay, so it immediately we know it is an enlargement from the point 
uh, three, four, because I joined the sites together to identify where did they intersect or overlap. And the skill factor here is the main assessment. So first thing first, the shape was being inverted. So please remember to put a negative. And the other thing was it was being shrinken. So it will actually be one over two. So if you were to fill up negative two means that you overlook the question and treated it as triangle U onto triangle T. As for question 19, making Y the subjects, okay, I first rearrange everything. And then please remember to get rid of a square, you need to introduce a square root. And that's pretty much it. Your final answer should be square root with a numerator of h square minus x square over 2 as a denominator. Question 20. Okay, tricky questions comes from here. This is actually a circle theorem. Question. So angle ADC. Angle ADC here is actually angle from the circumference. And for the angle at the center, it should be AOC. So AOC compared to ADC, ADC is actually half of AOC. So the first thing that I did was to identify the major sector of AOC. I did it through tracing it from ABC's value because this is angle from the circumference. I multiply it by 2 and I get it as 262. So for full circles, it is always 360. 360 minus by 262, you should get a balance of 98. So this 98 here, when you divide by 2, you will get 49, which is the angle ADC's value. For part B, they are looking for AOC's value. So this is the one that I uh, have to point it out. This type of question is actually a major issue because it's not the first time they phrase the question like this. So they didn't specify that the angle AOC they are referring to is the major or the minor sector. So these are the things that I wanted to address to Cambridge. Please phrase your question carefully because if you were to do it this way, I wouldn't know which part that you're actually asking for. Can it be 262 or just 98? So what should I actually fill up? Okay, so this is not the first time they did this kind of vague question. Okay, so if you guys are from Cambridge, or any of the teachers here that's listening to this, please point it out to the exam board that uh, a lot of the papers from the past have been having this issue and I uh, hope that someone can raise this up. As for question C, angle BAT here, okay, it is actually equals to ADB because of the alternate segment theorem. Okay, so it is 20 degree. As for the last question, we have OAB here. Okay, they are referring to the angle of uh, OA is a radius and joining with the tangent 98. So you actually form a 90 degree there and by minusing it off with the 20, you should get the balance as 70 degree for OAB's value. Question 21 here in this question, multiply the 3 into 5 power section and also x to the power of 4, okay? So you should get 5 to the power of 3 times x to the power of 4 times 3. So after the calculation, it should be 125x to the power of 12. As for part B, 256, okay, after multiplying the 3 over 8 into it, as for the x, 256 times 3 over 8, it should be 8 times x to the power of 96 as the final answer.
As for question 22 here, they are referring to directly proportional. So the formula that I constructed was P equals to K bracket Q plus 2 bracket square. So this thing here, the K represents the scale factor. Substituting 1 into both P and Q's value, you should get 9K equals to 1 and K will be 1 over 9. So P's value will be 1 over 9 bracket Q plus 2 bracket square. By substituting 10 into Q's position, you should get your final results as 16. Over at question 23. So they wanted us to draw the three lines out. So X more than equals to two line must be solid. Okay, and as you can see, every time after I draw out the line, I will always okay, attach an arrow there to help me to identify the region that they are referring to later on. So these are the things that I did earlier. I always find the horizontal and vertical line first. After that was being done, I'll be looking at y more than equals to x. So the line that I drew over there actually has a minor problem because as you can see from the right hand corner there, because I drew it with a red pen so I couldn't change it. Okay, it's supposed to be accurate. Then the last point in the right hand corner should be intersecting at the final corner instead of a slight discrepancy there. So please take note on this. And the last one, we'll be using 2x plus y equals to 8. So when we are calculating the intersection, I will just put it equals to 0. And I drew a box over there. When x is 0, my y will be 8. When y goes to 0, my x will be 4. So through this, I'm able to construct the line. And I labeled the arrow as well. So the region that I'm referring to will be the little triangle over there where I put r. Okay, so please remember to shade off the unwanted region. And then for part B, finding the largest value here. So because all three lines is solid line, so for us to calculate the largest value, we'll be looking at all the corners there. So we have 2, 4, we have 2, 2, and 2.6, 2 2.6. So the value... Okay, the coordinates that will give you the largest value will be 2, 4. So 2 plus 4 will be 6. Question 24, identifying the area of the sector here. So since they gave you the arc length, okay, so we actually, actually use 2 pi r to trace the theta sub value. So theta over 360 times 2 pi r equals to 6.4. By running the calculation, you should get 6.4 divided by 2 pi 8 times 360, which is 48 point, 45.8 degree. So with this 45.8 degree, we can move on to calculate the area of the sector by taking 45.8 divided by 360 pi times pi r squared. So our r here is still 8, no changes to it. Your final answer should be 25.6 centimeter square. As for question 25, okay, I actually split the workings into two parts. So I solved the numerator and denominator separately where I labeled 1 and 2 there. So 2x squared plus x minus 15, after factorizing it, you should get 2x minus 5 multiplied with x plus 3. After that was being done, I fill it into the numerator space, then I move on to check on the denominator value. So denominator value here, okay, from the first two variables, I noticed that a actually repeated. So I decided to extract a from it and I have a balance of x plus 3. For the next Remaining two variables, I decided to extract negative 2b and I have balance of x plus 3 there. So rearranging it, you will get a minus 2b over x plus 3. So by filling up the denominator, you will notice that x plus 3 actually repeated and the balance will be 2x minus 5 over a minus 2b.
So for question 26, the cube root over there, I can actually write it as 1 over 3. And since the y was being squared, instead of writing it as 1 over 3 times 2, I will combining them and writing it as y to the power of 2 over 3. So if you struggle to understand this, it's mainly uh, your indices concept wasn't that strong. Please take note that if it's square root, then you can write it as power of 1 over 2. Whatever root, okay, you can just put the roots value at the denominator section of the power. So y to the power of 2 over 3 equals to x to the power of 1 over 6. In order to make it into y to the power of 1, I decided to multiply both sides with 3 over 2. Okay, by doing this at the power section, it will become y to the power of 1 and x will be to the power of 1 over 4. So 1 over 4 basically means that it is a root with a power of 4. So n will be 4 as the final results. As for question 27, I personally find this question troublesome because it involves a lot of steps and it's not that it is unsolvable but just very lengthy workings and uh, you require more thinking to it. So they are actually asking for angle HAF, okay, which uh, we don't actually have sufficient information for it. So you actually have to break it down and find HA and find AF value first. So HA are identifying through uh, illustrating the triangle over there and uses Pythagoras theorem. AF, I also did the same thing to illustrate it out. Okay. The other thing to take note was that uh, our value of HF and AF is the same because the, the side that they are using is having a length of 8 and a width of 6. So I don't have to repeat the calculation and now I have all three sides value of HAF. And since they are looking for angle HAF, I will be using cosine rule to identify the final answer. So. Uh, for cosine rule, I actually didn't memorize both the formula. I just used the basic one and then run the rearrangement. So you will notice that the workings there is a bit lengthy. So if you can memorize the formula, you just substitute the variables respectively and you should be able to get the same answer as mine, which is 64.9. So that's pretty much it for this paper, May, June 22, 2020. So if you have friends that are struggling to solve this paper, feel free to share it to them. And I wish you all the best in your upcoming examination. Thank you.